How do you define millennials? Let's go a little bit younger than that. How about Gen Z? When you think of those born after 1996, most typically think of a generation that's technically savvy and deeply immersed within digital devices, not limited to cell phones, laptops, iPads, gaming consoles, virtual reality. Technology exists everywhere. But let's take a look at what's really going on inside. Kids are immersed in the digital world, exploring social interactions through social media, communication applications. Common Sense Media has reported that 75% of teenagers in America have profiles on social media networks. Smartphones have facilitated the shift in teens' communication and information landscape, making it faster than ever before. We are more interconnected than ever. The selfie. Merriam-Webster defines a selfie as a photograph that one takes of oneself, typically with a smartphone or webcam, and shared via social media. <laughs> Selfies have become a creative outlet for people to express themselves. While some may argue that they are narcissistic or inauthentic, they offer a glimpse into the lives of, some, of people. Many women are using selfies to take back control over how they are perceived in a world where peer pressures to look a certain way are heavier than ever. The selfie defies the notion that girls can't be proud of, what, of their own image. It allows girls to show who they are and how they want to be perceived. The selfie allows women and girls to take back control of their image, an empowering feeling in the world of social media. With the rise of that social media, it's become rooted in our day-to-day -day lives, and I'm sure many of you are on social media right now. It gives us access to communication on a global platform. Digital communities have been popping up left and right within those networks for any interest group or niche or topic possible. Let's take a look at a recent social media movement. Hashtag Stand with Standing Rock. The Standing Rock movement was started by Dakota Iron Eyes and her friends when they heard that the Dakota Access Pipeline was going to be rerouted away from Bismarck and through their sacred lands. The Standing Rock youth were able to get the attention of the world through hashtags, live streaming, YouTube, Twitter. They took to digital media to engage in peaceful protests. Five million tweets were used using hashtag no Dakota access pipeline or hashtag stand with Standing Rock. Digital medias are no longer a place solely for professionals or academics, but they found their way into unique niches within youth and adults. Teens are using digital communities to develop their sense of self when it comes to school or personal interests. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, other blogging platforms that many of you have probably gotten on today, they're all, they all offer a place for students to find people just like them. With a quick search, you can find a group for youth cross-country runners, Ironman triathletes, safe places for people going through struggling times, artists in high school, or even band geeks. When these communities have the social and emotional supports for their digital citizens, it gives youth the environment where they feel safe to talk among like-minded people. I want to take a look at one of my students. His name's Nick. He's an eighth grader at my school. He's not here today. Um, who's frequently found with a computer in front of him. I, I didn't know him for the beginning of the school year, but I met him when we were introducing digital portfolios at our school. And there was a challenge to make an avatar of yourself um, he created this collage of himself where he took his face and he put all the interests that make him who he is. 
Nick told me he made this using Photoshop, and then he went on to show me some more of the images that he's created. I asked him how he learned to do this, and he told me that he's a member of a Google Plus community that where artists get to show their own work and critique others' work in Photoshop. They have 14-day challenges where they learn to develop skills like drawing the human face or drawing a hand. In addition, he also use, fo follows many of those artists on YouTube where they post tutorials and he gets to learn how to use the different tools within Photoshop. Now clearly Nick has an interest for digital art, but he's using a diverse array of forums and social media networks to showcase his work and become a valuable member and contributor within the digital communities. Now, Nick doesn't know what he wants to be when he's older, let alone what he wants to do. But as he discovers new interests, like his recent interest in virtual reality, it provides him a place in communities that he can go to as an avenue to explore his expressions of identity and creativity. When these uses of technology, what these uses of technology all have in common is the ability to give voice to hopes and dreams. They empower youth to pursue their passions. The academic, the writer, the musician, the, the artist, the social media, the social activists. The interconnected digital community gives youth a space to determine who they want to be, what they want to know and learn, while they enter a safe virtual world to explore the self they imagine they want to be. Now, despite all the positives, of technology, there have always been negatives, negative counterpoints, many of which are valid, citing that balance is key. But the truth is that technology needs to be embraced. Technology is the future, a fast changing future that we can count on to continually become faster, better, and more convenient. The benefits of technology is a list that could go on and on. I leave you with this final note. What role could technology play in finding your inner passions? Thank you.